Hi, this is Amir again and this is my fifth video in the series for Excel Basic. In this video, I'm going to talk about copying and pasting and I'm also going to talk about conditional formatting. I'm going to talk about if function and I'm also going to show you what's known as absolute reference, where to use it and how to use it. So the first thing we'll do is copying and pasting. In Excel, because we are dealing with uh, formulas when we are copying and pasting, there is just a extra element to it that when you are copying and pasting, you have to be aware of. So I've just created like a small example here where I've got some products and, and three months and the sales individually of those months. What I want to do is I want to do a total for each and every month. So the easiest way to do it I can just select the numbers like that and hit the auto sum button so it automatically does the summation for me now what I want to do is I want to take these three totals and copy it so I can so I'm going to go ahead and select it I can right click on it and hit copy or I can go to edit and hit copy or I could just do it from the toolbar right here copy. Now on sheet 2 I've created some information like I've got that sales by month and then January, February, March and I want to put the totals right below them. I just want to put the total number there. So just uh, briefly just a re revision from last time reminder it's like if I selected all the three cells and I can hit this button called merge and center it will put the information in the middle. Now Underneath this line up here, I'm going to click on edit. I think I just lost my copy, so I'm just going to go back. It's already selected. Right click, copy, come back to sheet 2. Right click on it, paste special. Now when I do a paste special, because I copied the formula, I can choose whether I want to put the values or I want to put the formula right there. So I'm going to choose values this time and I click OK. So it takes a number from there and puts it here. I just want to show you what it will do if I didn't put the value. So if I just right click here and I hit paste, it just puts the summation off and then it just makes an assumption that you want to do a summation of A1 through A3. So it just thinks that you want to add all these numbers together which is not the case. So that's why you don't want to do that. It's going to hit undo. I'm going to go to edit, space special again. It remembers the last copy that we did. Now this time I'm going to do a paste link. And I'll talk about it, why and what's the difference between adding the values and adding a paste link. So now when I go back to sheet 1 and say if I make any changes here, say for example I'm going to change this 1800 to 4000 and I'm going to change this 1500 to 3000. So I've changed the numbers on two places. So when I go to sheet 2, you'll find that this number has changed and this number has changed. However, the one above it hasn't changed because in the first instance, we only pasted the values. In the second one, we did a paste link. So they are linked together. So if you look at the cell A4 and look at the formula bar, it says sheet 1, B5. That means if I go to sheet 1 and I look at B5, it is linked. So anytime I make any changes here, the totals will show up automatically on sheet 2. So something that you know when you're doing copying and pasting. If I, I can also do the same thing when I'm doing copying and pasting in Word. I can copy this information. I can go to Microsoft Word, do a paste special. Then I can choose whether I want to do a paste or just do a paste link. So I'll just show you briefly edit, copy. I'm going to go ahead and launch Microsoft Word. Okay. And I go to edit, 
paste special. Now right here I can choose whether I want to do a paste or a paste link and then I just have to tell Word that what I'm pasting is an Excel worksheet object and I click OK and it adds the information. Now anytime, in this case this is a paste link, anytime any information changes on the original Excel sheet this information will get updated automatically and you can do the same thing in PowerPoint or any other place where you want to paste it within Microsoft Office. So I'm just going to close this. Okay. So this was copying and pasting. Let's go to the next thing and we'll look at uh, if and conditional formatting. For that on this sheet I just have this simple example here with people's names and sales and I'm going to use an if function to show you how to use it to decide who gets the bonus and who doesn't. So let's talk about if in a little bit of a logical manner. In the logical manner doing if is to understand is like for example as a parent you might be doing it to your kids or when you were kids your parents did it to you when they say that if you get good grades you will get a bicycle or whatever if you don't you will not get anything so there are three parts to the if function the first part is the statement so in this case the statement is like if the sales are over 4,000, okay, so if that statement is true, I'll say give them $500. And then if it is false, if they haven't gone over 4,000, then I can say either give them zero or I can say give them 100. So that's it, is to if function. So let's start the if function. You can start it by clicking on the FX button up here next to the formula bar or you can go to insert function and then right there where it's already dark I can type the word if and click go now I've got the if function here on the bottom click it click OK now right there is my logical test the first statement so I'm just gonna take my mouse and click on the cell which is B2 where the sales are and I'm gonna say if B2 is greater than 4000 so the next line is, okay, so what if that statement is true? I'll say, you know what, give them $300 as a bonus. If not, I'll say give them 50 I click OK. I come up here, look for the fill handle, left click and hold it and I can drag it down. And right there you see all the sales numbers where if the sales are over 4000 they get a bonus of 300 where it is less than 4000 they get a bonus of 50 so that is if function if you wanted to make any changes to the if function you can just while you are on that cell you can click the FX and it opens up the same window that we saw earlier now let's look at conditional formatting we all know what a formatting is when I click on a cell and then I can choose to make it bold, italic or make the size bigger. Conditional formatting is you're just trying to put a condition saying that if you see this number less than this number, greater than this number, then do this. So you're just putting a condition on it. So I'm just going to select this in numbers up here. I'm going to go to format, conditional formatting. And then I'm going to say if the cell value is, it's already selected that, say greater than, or I can say greater than or equal to 4000. Format, because I need to tell it what to format it. I can make it bold, I can change the sizes or whatever I feel like. I'm just going to put a color on it, so I'm going to say make it um, green. I can add another condition and I can say if the cell value is less than 4000 I can pick any number I want I'm just choosing it right now make say make it red so I'm just formatting it to red I click OK so you see the numbers over 4000 will be green and their numbers below 
4000 will be red. If I want to remove the condition, I just select the numbers again, format, conditional formatting, and I hit the delete button. Choose the conditions I want to delete, one, two, click OK, and click OK. So that's conditional formatting. And let's get to the last part. So it's on sheet four. I've just typed. So this is a sample for absolute reference. And I'll just talk about it as I do the example itself. In this case, what I have is the names of the salespeople and then individual sales. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do the total sales. So I'm just going to select the numbers and hit the auto sum button. Now up here, I want to do is, is take the individual sales and divide it by the total so that I get the percentage. So I want to know what percentage of the total is Jimmy's sale, Paul, or the other people's. So the easiest way to do is I just do an equal to individual sales divided by the total. And I hit the check mark to or press enter. Now as usual, I'm just going to use the fill handle to copy it down. And what happens is I get an error. Because if you remember from the previous videos where I talked about fill handle, when you copy a fill handle down, it automatically changes the cells. So B2 divided by B6 will change to B3 divided by B7. However, if you look at it, B7 is empty. So you get an error saying you cannot divide anything by 0. So what I need to do is I need to tell Excel that, hey, you can change B2, but don't change B6. So that's where the notion of absolute reference comes in, where you tell Excel that B6 should be the same so that you do B2 divided by B6, B3 divided by B6, B4 divided by B6. So I'm just going to hit the delete button on this. And I'm going to do it again, equal to B2, which is individual sale, divided by. Now I can do a couple of ways to put the absolute reference. All I have to do is put a dollar sign around it. So I do dollar B, dollar 6. I can even, while I'm typing, clicking on B6, I can just press the F4 key on the keyboard and it will put the dollar sign for me. I'm going to hit the check mark, enter. Now I'm going to use the fill handle and copy it down. So I've got all the answers. And I can click on this percentage sign. So it gives me the answer in percentage that Jimmy is selling 24% of the sales, Nathan is doing 28, Paul is doing 24. But the in thing to remember is what is absolute reference and what it does. So during formulas, you might come across a situation where certain cells don't need to change when you use a fill handle. So you can make it an absolute reference by putting dollar signs before them. So that's it for this video. Hopefully I'll have the next video soon where I'll talk about charts. Thank you.